if I get this one cardigan that mm-hmm. looks like all my other cardigans, I'm going to be, I'm going to finally be able to be the person I always hoped I could be. Investing, doing it is probably sexy, but talking about it and knowing anything about it, no thank you. In any day job I ever have, I'm looking to coast. Every single job I've ever had, I did not meet all of the quote unquote requirements on the wish list. Why isn't the New York Times just like every other week putting out a front page that's like, this person's really happy. If I like wasn't doing any of the above, I would be solving (laughs) the allergy crisis. Hey, welcome back. We're not for everyone. I'm Jess. I'm the lover. That's Caroline. She's the hater. What's good? Hating baby cheeks. What? I think it's pretty good. Wow, that was cool. <laughs> Hating She's... baby cheeks. Hating baby cheeks. That What's is my you? Christian name. Yeah, it's my government name. <laughs> Your confirmation <laughs> name? My confirmation name. <laughs> my confirmation name is Luke, actually. I took a man's name. That's so cool of you. Whoa, she was woke before we even had a word for it. Wow, that's so true. I feel like I'm like po- I'm post woke or pre woke or something. Pre woke. You're whatever. You're... Whatever. Whatever makes me better than people, I guess. You're woke BC, before Christ, after Christ, after death, whatever it is. Yeah, after uh, death. <laughs> my confirmation name was Therese. Saint Teresa, I guess, goes by Teresa and Therese. I don't know. It's like the same saint, but I yeah. was really insistent. That it was Therese and that Therese. I needed to be that version of it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I want to I want to put French. a little sparkle in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, French. Okay, okay. I don't really know why, but I assume it had something to do with that. Anyway. What was what's Therese's deal? She was like the patron saint of I feel like it was like kids or something, which is a crazy thing now that I know myself at like, 32. <laughs> Yeah, it was something like a caretaker kids, which I mean, I guess I I am quite caretaking, but um, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's something to do with that. That's nice. That's a nice sentiment. What's Luke? Luke, I think he's a patron saint of medicine, maybe. Oh, Um, that tracks. I don't know. I was just like, I know, I like that. I'm not. I'm not. I like that saint. I like that. Yeah, you like your dad. Nice. Your dad's a doctor. You like your brother. His name is Luke. Luke. Yeah, Yeah, I think I was just like, let's just keep it in the family. You're like, I just want to be one of the men in the family. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I adore. Um, Tell me stuff. Tell me. My my brain's empty, but yours doesn't look like it is. Very deceiving. It's empty. (laughs) Don't worry. It's always empty. But I can still tell you something. This is something that's like annoying, but also hilarious. Are you in the market for that? 100%. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) Okay, recently I had to buy um, a good friend of ours is pregnant, and you know the one, and I was going to buy her a diaper backpack. Mm. She needs a diaper backpack for when the baby comes. Um, And so I was searching for like very specific item, pregnancy items I'm not usually searching for, and ended up on this um, shop, like this site website that I'd never been on before. It was like the first time I'd hit this brand, whatever they sell, diaper, baby bags, whatever. Very specifically have like never heard or seen of this brand before. Mm-hmm. Found a diaper bag, you know, bought it, ordered it, checked out, it's on the way, carry on to live my life. And then I go like sit down on the couch and I turn on YouTube. And the very first ad that you get is, is the, is this brand that like, I'm going to you know, go off. I've never, I've never seen it before. Like, obviously we all know, like, you know, all the accounts and cookies and whatever is linked and they know where you're shopping, but that, Fucking but cookies. that experience, <laughs> that experience is so funny to me. Like, forget the, like listening to you and watching you all over the place. Like I was shopping on my phone. It comes up on my computer. Okay. It's not that many leaps to get there with the data, but it it's such a, in a way, it's such a funny moment to me because it's like, to me, that moment it, it it the equivalent in person feels like I just went to the mall and like I bought a diaper bag and I went to the cash register and I paid for the diaper bag and I'm walking to my car and mm-hmm. someone like runs up to me at the car and is like, hey, do you need a diaper bag? <laughs> and it's I'm exactly like, that. 
oh, I did like 35 <laughs> seconds ago. I actually just got one. They're like, yeah, diaper bag? You want a diaper bag? I can give you a diaper bag. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like you're, you, you started out the research well. Like, yes, that was a need, but you like didn't complete your research. I got the, the I got the diaper. I actually, you actually, this is such wasted advertising dollars. I just right. got out of the market for this thing. I'm done now. I actually got it. And they're like a diaper bag? You, you want one? I have one, bitch. I just bought it. I was just inside with you. It's, I just it's bought one. It's been happening so much more. I mean, this has been happening for years, obviously. We're all familiar with it. But I feel like lately I've been noticing it way more. Maybe around the holidays, there's a lot of like, you know, advertising advertising dollars pushed yeah. so that people buy more things. But And it's so funny when it's something that you're like, yeah, I know. I just bought I know. it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if. I wonder if part of it is like a psychological thing where they're trying to show you they think you're an idiot and that you don't realize mm-hmm. that the only reason that's showing up is because they have your data and they might catch a person who wants to see that advertised on their Instagram to confirm that they made a good purchase. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh what? look, it's a thing that people look. There's a review. This this ad came up with like five star ratings and a review. I did a good job. I don't know. So you think, that's you the think only spending- argument I can make for it. You think they're spending advertising dollars just to make people feel good about what they already <laughs> bought? I don't know about that one, Jess. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Now that now that you repeat it back in that way, <laughs> I oh, it makes me so mad. And w- wouldn't you think that they'd be able to close that loop of like they can knowing that you bought it because they have. I mean, it's it's like the data is there. There's abandoned checkout alerts and stuff. You know, like right. if you put something in your cart and then you abandon your cart you're very likely to get an email saying you get 20%, 20% off. You know, it's like a little hack you can do. Just like abandon your cart with having put in your email and yeah. they'll probably give you a discount to push you to buy it. So the data is there. The tracking is usually there. But I don't know. You know, it's probably not incorporated into whatever is pulling all, right. what, what, you know, whatever, who the fuck, whatever the stuff is. Uh, but it is funny to me that they're like, hey, we're doing a pretty good job of knowing what you want. And I'm like, yeah, like a pretty good job, but like not a great job. <laughs> not not like an amazing job. You actually missed a key part, which is that I very specifically no longer need this. The part of of all of this that I find the freakiest, and I can understand it in a way from a data perspective, but like how good it's getting is crazy to me, is yeah. that there will often be something that I haven't typed into Google. I haven't typed in a text message. I haven't looked up. I haven't said out loud. So oh. whether, you know, people always say like, oh, my phone's listening to me. I haven't and even that said is fucking it. true. Yo, that and is I fucking haven't true. even typed it. It just exists in my head. Yeah. I just had a thought of like, <laughs> oh, I, I, sh- I maybe I should look into this thing. Okay. Anyway, I'm busy. Need to go about my day. Do nothing about that thought. And later that night I get an ad for it. And I know that they can't read my mind. Oh, actually, I don't know that they can't read my mind. And that's what freaks yeah. me out. Yeah, but I, um, I find it interesting how good their data on like who I am, what my demographics are, the types of needs I might have, you know, like all of that converging and then the timing of it being so perfect. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy. It makes me not want to yeah. buy the thing, though. I'm like, oh, now that you figured me out, I don't even want it. Fuck you. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Little defiant teenager in you. Mm-hmm. I, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a topic that gets people fiery. It doesn't get me that fiery though, because I kind of feel like, I don't know, like if I if like you show helping. me something, if you show me something that I. And I'm like, oh, I do really want that. Then I'm then I'm happy to have it. I don't I know. know. I'm torn about it because I'm well, such because a consumer. I I'm love to not buy. as much. OK, so I'm <laughs> not as much of a consumer. I say I would say I spend too much money on clothes mm-hmm. for sure. I'm always buying new clothes like. <laughs> but that's really that's the main thing I'm burning money on. Yeah. And for me, it's always I caught myself in this moment like this week where I bought, <laughs> I bought these cardigans. I bought these, I'm wearing one right now. You to- you've already told cardigans. me about these cardigans. Oh my God. I bought these cardigans and I was so excited for these cardigans to arrive. They were like kind of expensive. And I realized, okay, I built it up in my head. I'm like check- checking the tracking to see where the package is. And once the cardigans arrived, I like opened the box and like, 
oh, what do you know? They're just fucking cardigans. <laughs> and I was putting them on and I'm like, okay, well, they like fit and they're like a pretty color and like, you're still just a cardigan. And I, and I caught myself in this moment where I was like, I really thought this was going to change my life. Like that. And yeah. I, and I actually think that's like most of the mindset we're in when we buy things is like, if I get this one cardigan that mm -hmm. looks like all my other cardigans, I'm going to be, I'm going to finally be able to be the person I always hoped I could be. Yeah. I will become the type of person that wears an expensive cardigan from this store. And to me, that means I have my shit together. I yeah. look cute all the time, no yeah. matter where, even to just to the grocery store, I look great. Like this, that, the other, whatever your perceptions are about that, the person that buys that cardigan, totally. Oh, I'm like, they got me. They really got mm -hmm. me. Yeah, my life has um, remained pretty much the same, I'm going to say, in the That's last couple of days since I've been wearing these cardigans. But it, it was a ridiculous <laughs> moment of like opening up the box and being like, oh, yeah, it's just a, I guess I knew it was a cardigan, but it, it truly is just a cardigan. Yeah, I have really um, like reduced my spending on clothing. I used to be exactly the same way. I My biggest expense in a month, other than rent and things like that, was my was clothing. Yeah. And I have this full closet of so many clothes and I never wear any of them and I keep buying more. And that was the pattern. Yeah. And I've mentioned this, but I've started using that rental service newly yeah. and just spending 98 bucks on clothes a month, basically. And I am flushed with cash. Like I literally <laughs> am feeling rich. I look at my bank account and I'm like, oh, she, oh? she can like take herself out. Like she could plan a trip like it is insane I've also reduced um like buying coffee out and things like that and mm -hmm. it is insane how much money I've been saving but that being said you always find something else to spend on like as soon as I started <sighs> saving on clothing I was like you know what I should do redesign my whole bedroom and I just yeah. like have gone on a spree of like buying prints and buying a new headboard and doing this and doing that so um I, I still think saying? I'm like, like net saving, but it's I like to spend. It feels good. It's regional therapy. therapy. What do they say? Like your your um your expenses will expand to meet your means, basically, mm -hmm. which I think applies to a lot of things. I don't know if that's like a saying or if that's something my dad would just like whisper mm -hmm. at me late at night. <laughs> but <laughs> that's a classic Tom Winkler. But mm -hmm. but it's true. I feel like I have lived off of for most yeah. of my adult life on my own income lived off an income where like a hundred ninety eight dollars on clothes a month fucking no way I was pocketing toilet paper from the restaurants I worked at because it was too much to buy toilet paper like a mm -hmm. need and um and so I'm like I don't know. At some point I was talking to like my accountant and we're talking about savings and emergency fund and whatever and this and that. And she's like, well, how, you know, how much can you actually live off of? It's like, I feel like I can live off a negative amount of money. I did that for so long. Um, but then having money, I will immediately find ways to spend it. Yeah. yeah. Your, your, your expenses will meet your means. But... That is really accurate. I was, I recently got like a survey from my college um, asking about, cause I guess it's been 10 years since graduation. So they were asking about like, are you um, rich yet? Basically they were like, yeah. what was, what was your first job out of college? How much did you make? What was your job five years out? What, how much did you make? What's your job now? How much do you make? And I've not really like thought that much about that and put it down on paper before, but seeing that expansion, was just a crazy reminder of how little I can live off of. And I was having a blast when I was 22, right out of college, first job mm. making making nothing. Um, I was still like having a good life, all things having considered. My basic needs were taken care of and more. Um, and it's crazy that like still to this day, I'm spending it. I Somebody wrote us, somebody wrote us a, a hot take submission that was like I saw this one I love this one it was like it was actually written really funny and I think I have it saved hold on um <laughs> they said hot take on investing 
in parentheses stocks question mark are you doing it is everyone doing it and no one was talking about it i find investing pretty sexy but maybe i'm lame um <laughs> i thought that was funny i mean i i can give no advice in this category but i will just say that the only thing that enables me to save is like automating money into investment accounts and like it's gone savings it's not my money anymore i don't it's even not my money. see it yeah it's gone so yeah. I don't, you know, I can't advise you on how to invest. I do think it's a smart thing to do, but like, can I say more than that? No. Um, but for me, it's like a savings tactic because there's, yeah, I don't know, there's like retirement accounts, but there's also like shorter term investing. Like if you want to buy a house or if you want to just save yearly for trips or whatever your goals are. Um, yeah, that's the only way I can save money. And then I literally spend the find things yeah. to spend the rest on. <laughs> I think that is the only way for me to counter what I do think is a pretty universal um, uh, tendency of like your expenses rising to meet your means um, is that I have to trick myself into thinking my means are way less. Like take this huge piece of the pie and put it away and I don't ever mm -hmm. want to see it again. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did get, I got a financial advisor this year, which I, I guess I kind of felt like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a great person to ask about this, but, um, I was like finally making money where that felt like I even had money to put aside as opposed to yeah. like not knowing if I was going to be able to pay my rent, whatever. Um, and so that has been helpful. I think you can probably get, they usually take like a percentage of what you invest, like 1% or something like that yeah. um so that's something to look into i don't know Do you meet with them? basically yeah in the beginning like we were meeting um in the beginning we were to like talk about goals there were a bunch of meetings goals and status quo and cleaning up um i don't know tax things and getting a new accountant and stuff like that but ne it's not a regular meeting mm -hmm. now you know um but that that was kind of the solution to me because I was like, I'm not the person who's going to educate myself on this. I want to pay someone. I would rather give a little bit of money to someone to that I trust to make the decisions than me ever have to learn anything about it. I refuse yeah. to learn. I'm trying. I'm trying to know less. I'm right. trying to unburden myself of knowledge. In that way, maybe investing, doing it is probably sexy, but talking about it and knowing anything about it no thank you <laughs> just that person's message about it being sexy no, i was like <laughs> i was like be careful don't fall for those invest in investment bros it's not it's not gonna work out nicely for you oh yeah yeah no, don't date a <laughs> finance bro don't date a finance bro um but it, it is a thing where i'm like all those stupid classes we had in high school like pretty much everything every single one of them was stupid to me and like not one class on doing your taxes or like long-term finances or like I know how to ha how to have a marriage or like there's just so many classes. <laughs> However, that we, that we read, all missed. We read and reread and reread the Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner mm -hmm. and wrote multiple essays and papers on it. So that's good. Like that definitely prepared me for stuff. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I liked it. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was that was a highlight of high school for me. But um, yeah, it's it's insane how like financial literacy is such a just a, a gap for so many people and nobody talks about it. Like nobody talks about how much they make with each other. I think that's changing a little bit, just like mm. transparency. I'll just ask people. And if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to tell me, but I just yeah. ask. I'm just like, I tell feel me. like if someone asks me, I tell them, you know, like, yeah, I, that's how not... I feel. If you ask me, I'll tell you, but yeah, I, I think everyone's afraid to ask. Yeah. It was one of those taboo topics, like so asking someone's weight or, asking an older person's age or something like that like it literally is one of those things how yeah. much do you make um just but tell it's me the only way for all of us to do better <laughs> i feel like the way that i that i see most people gaining any kind of financial literacy is that it's in their family culture um yeah. it's like their parents value it or talk about it or help them set goals that maybe even leads them into thinking about it and so in my family that was very very absent um mm. and i don't know i think there's probably like more chat about it on like the dude's golf course and shit like that i don't know why it's still so gendered but it it kind of feels like it is yeah um yeah so well I don't just know. because of i think it probably just ties a lot to 
um, gender, like gender norms and gender roles of, you know, men being the breadwinners and yeah, women not having to worry about that as much. Obviously that has changed, but the culture of actually talking about it right. hasn't caught up. And that's and why it's still, there yeah, is such a movement. Our... Yeah. Of like women, like women tell each other how much you wake, make women, um, you know, like fight for the raise, fight for the promotion, apply for the job, even if you don't meet all of the oh my God. that Can are Can I say thing, this right you know? now? Yeah. <clears throat> One of the most important things, I don't know. I don't know what the stat was. I'll make up a number. It doesn't fucking matter. But there are the statistics of like the average guy will apply to a job if he meets yes. like 20% of the requirements. And a woman like the average woman will apply only if they meet 100% of the requirements. Like just apply to the job. Apply to jobs you are completely unfit for. If you totally. have the time to do it, just do it. I've done it. And, and sometimes you get the job. Worst case scenario, you're in the same position. Worst case scenario, you don't get the job right. or you get to talk to somebody. Like there's, there is no loss. Be applying for the jobs. Also those, the job requirement lists that you see, those are a wish list. Mm -hmm. Like if you've ever been the person leaving a position and putting and, and seeing creating like, that, exactly. Putting, seeing that list they put together, it's so aspirational. Like, and it's I've often literally... so mismatched to the actual position. Just apply, yeah. apply to jobs that you certainly should never have. Do it. Do it. You'll probably get them. Yeah. I mean, cosign 1000%. I think my parents told me that very early on. So silly. And so it silly. was the best advice that they've ever given me and like yeah. something that to this day, every single job I've ever had, I did not meet all of the quote unquote requirements on the wish list, which it really is a wish list. And now in the position I'm in, I've even written job descriptions and to be the person writing a job description and be like, well, I'm just going to write down these bullets. Like we kind of yeah. would like this bullshit. <laughs> we kind of would like this bullshit. Like it's just some person writing a list of bullets that like would be nice um yeah. even to make things... their new job easier <laughs> right 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 well it would be great if they could actually do this piece of thing too so that i don't have to do it anymore exactly and even the piece that's like i think people get really hung up on like oh they want someone with over seven years of experience and i have six stop it girl stop it right Dude. now apply for the job if you have five apply for that job like truly that is it's all it's all fake until they see your resume and they meet you and they decide, you know? Um, yeah. One of the most important things to me um, or that I thought about in interviews, I mean, kind of all the time is that like people want to hire people they will enjoy working with every day for the mm -hmm. most part. Like, and that means someone who's going to be competent at the work. Um, but it also means someone that you can spend like extensive amount of time sitting next to or in meetings with. And so e when I was walking into a position where I knew like I wasn't the most experienced, I just tried really hard to be like the most enjoyable person um, because that's that's actually not a small factor. It's probably not mm -hmm. going to go on the job requirement wish list, but at the root of it, like you're spending more time probably with your coworkers than you are with your family, with your friends, with your partner, and you want it to be someone you enjoy being around. Um, that totally. Totally a long way and then you learn the rest you know I also think like having a high EQ emotional intelligence is like a underrated quality that I'm noticing more and more is emphasized in hiring and recruiting and it's something mm. that I've I've realized as I've grown through my career I constantly get the feedback from employers that like my high EQ helps me in the job in this way enables me to yeah. manage people in this way enables me to manage up to leadership and communicate in this way. And at some point I got that feedback, which is great feedback and really flattering, but I got that feedback so many times that I was like, oh, hmm. I thought that this was just me being like a human, <laughs> but it actually sets me apart from a lot of other people who just show up and kind of like em emptily do the job and yeah. don't show up for their coworkers, aren't a team player, aren't observant of the dynamics that are happening and how to navigate them in a savvy and smart way. Like if you have those types of skills, then finding a way to communicate that on your resume in an interview or just demonstrate it in the way you answer their questions, you think yeah. through a problem, like that goes a long way. That's so much more impressive than somebody that's like, yep, I've done all of these things before, you know? Yeah. Soft skills. Like mm -hmm. for me, um, 
one of the soft skills that I tried to emphasize a lot was being able, what was like communication and actually being able to like dumb down, um, you know, when I was in like the tech world to be able to kind of be a go between, between a product owner or a project manager and the developers. Yeah. A lot of times the developers like could not relay the technical things, like couldn't see the forest through the trees. So being the person who could like bridge conversations that way. Um, <clears throat> when I wasn't the strongest coder, I wasn't some like genius hacker, um, but that was like something I could add to the development skills and understanding I did have. Um, yeah, yeah Scott, soft skills. You talk. Go a long you way. Can talk. I can talk on those six different words and I can use them in all different voices. So, so. many ways. Wow. Yes. Wow, 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 wee wow. <laughs> Whoa. I really all like right. talking about that stuff, but it feels so boring. You know what I mean? Like like the energy when talking about career advice is so like oh, really? serious, but I really like talking about it because I feel like I, I have a lot it. to say. I feel like people ask those types of questions and need that type of guidance because you're right yeah. like if you're not getting it from parents or just like the culture in your family or m mentors maybe you haven't found you know great bosses who turn into mentors for you or whatever it is like mm -hmm. maybe your friends are in different lines of work so their opinion isn't as relevant I don't know I like talking about that stuff but I do too um, I don't find it boring I never I know it's yeah hot. I think it's it hot. is hot we're boss babes hmm <laughs> What else you got though? Um, oh, or do you want me to got something? Let me see what I got. Um... Oh, I have something. Yeah, give it to me. <clears throat> well, kind of adjacent to the career topic. I think about this a lot and I've arrived at an answer that I feel really confident in. And the question is, what would you do if you weren't doing this? Like weren't <sighs> doing what you do now? And so what I do now is this podcast and I work in marketing at a digital health company. If I didn't do, I mean, ideally I'm just doing the podcast. Obviously we all know that. Okay. But if I like wasn't doing any of the above, I would be solving <laughs> the allergy crisis. <laughs> and I'm so fucking serious about that. I, I have had allergies. I'm going to go off. I've had allergies Damn. my whole life. I hope there's someone out there who like feels seen. I have struggled with allergies my whole life. There's literally nothing they can do for you other than give you medication. There's no cure. There's nothing that can take it away. It's just like take this pill every day or get these shots injected like on a regular basis or whatever it is. There's no cure. It makes every day hell. <laughs> it makes when I get sick, when I get a cold, it's 10 times worse because my, I already have like fucking stuff backed up in my nose from years of allergies. Like it's only worse if I get sick. Um, I've literally asked my doctor before to remove my sinuses. And he was like, yeah, that's not a possible thing. I would commit my life. I would do it while doing the podcast. Maybe this just replaces my day job. Like, I would like to cure <laughs> the allergy crisis. <laughs> the crisis? What's the crisis? It's is, a it like crisis. Suddenly, is it is it particularly acute right now or has it just been like at a steady pace for a long no, time? No, it's been steady. It's an unspoken pandemic. The people know. <laughs> people know. I am not the only person keeping Zyrtec in business. Every. I no, I have allergies. allergies. Mine, keeping mine Zyrtec 24 7 every single yeah. day of the year, 365. <laughs> 365. Three, 365 crisis solutions. <laughs> it's just good baking company. Do you have allergies? Like, help me out. I do have allergies. Um, spring allergies, and they'll they're bad for a couple weeks a year. Um, yeah. I have every season allergies. Really? I have that allergies sucks. no matter where I am. I'll find something. Like my Ooh. it's terrible. Anyway, what would you that do if you weren't doing this? <laughs> I also liked how you phrased it, how you weren't like, I'm going to be doing research towards finding a cure for, uh, I'm, you're like, I'm solving, solving it. it. I'm solving it. I'll be solving it. When I people am ask you what you do, I'm a solver. I'm a solver. <laughs> I'm 100% confident in my ability to solve almost any problem. If on I what can't kind of it, timeline? On what kind I'll of timeline? I'll bring on the right people on my team to do it. 
Okay. Um, I don't want to be working past like 55. So by yeah. then. By then. Okay. Yeah. That was wow. arbitrary, but that would be kind of kind of a waste of your energy to be putting it towards this podcast when you could be doing that <laughs> for it everybody. Be, it can be improving my whole life and everybody's Ooh. life. Um, but do you have an answer to that question? Would, and you can't say like coding, like going back to that, you know, no. something, something completely separate. Yeah, no, I'll be dead in a ditch before I'm coding again. <laughs> um, I this isn't uh, I have to finesse it, but I don't know. I, I kind of considered this at a certain point. Um, I was so focused on acting, but I thought about something related to child psychology. I don't want to actually I wouldn't mm. want to be a, ch- a child psychologist um or anything because i think that seems honestly too heavy and too yeah. much forever but there's like all i don't know maybe some like alternative thing or i don't know would I don't you solve know. I really it like it would i solve, solve it? it yeah no more psychology for children <laughs> let's get rid of it it's an issue they're it's all like- fine now they're all good yeah. i fixed them yeah, I think I'd probably be That's solving great. it. I would just mm-hmm. kiss one kid at a time until they were all happy. Don't report this podcast based Don't on that report. sentence. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> it no, reminds me of the kiss. It reminds me of Michael Scott's screen name, which is like Little Kid Lover sixty nine or something. <laughs> was sixty nine the year he was born in or something? Probably, but that you know, great. doesn't help. Doesn't help. It doesn't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's Ooh. good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would be the name of my clinic. It'd be Caroline <laughs> loves your children. She loves them. Kisses galore. Kisses galore. <laughs> Kisses, galore. <laughs> Kisses galore. Infinity. <laughs> That's probably what I would be doing. But it would be a for profit. Oh please, of course. Please, Let me just. Course. We've talked about this before, but I'm gonna say it again because what are you gonna, are you gonna say to about charity? Said. Yeah, let's drag charity right now. Do it. <laughs> Nonprofits are making a profit. Can I just say? I it goes back. What does it go back to? Like, like pay salaries or what? Yeah, it pays the employees and whatever. But they're making some of them. I mean, not the, not the ground level workers and things like that. They're making modest salaries, but the CEOs are making money of nonprofits. Like, have I talked before about how much I don't trust St. Jude's Children's Hospital? Yes, yes, that's the time that we talked about this. Yeah, (laughs) and you were correct. Carry on. I'm correct. I'm fucking correct. You're correct. You're correct. Um, no, that was it. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, I'm all over the place. Bibbity bop, um, bibbity bop. Keep bopping. So we've that talked about me. how we both don't really like museums, and we've been dragged for that. And I would like to bring it back up because I would like to be dragged again. I would like. I would like it very much. Um, give me rug burn. Mm. I went to Atlanta this past weekend with my best friend Kai. We've never been there before. It was kind of a random weekend trip we decided to do. And it is the home of the Coca-Cola headquarters. And they have an experience. Not I would call it an experience. It's a museum. It's a museum. It's a museum about you the history the Coca-Cola of Coca-Cola. <laughs> I went to the Coca-Cola museum alone. Kai didn't want to do it. I was like, no problem. This is still something that's a priority for me. I will go alone. <laughs> It's my favorite museum. I like museums now. <laughs> oh, wait. I just peed, I think, a little bit. Stop it. I made you laugh that hard? Yeah. Or are you, like, good? <laughs> I don't know. Should I just sit in it or should I do change? No, no, I think. What do you tell me what you need? I, I want to leave this in. <laughs> I have to go find out what happened. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Don't walk. Okay. Oh, okay. Shit. oh, shit. Oh, I just spilled so much water. Okay. Oh, you spilled water. Okay. We can leave this in because she actually just spilled water. I'm going to stay on here. This is for the YouTube audience. (laughs) Uh, uh. What should I tell you guys about? The only problem with the Coca-Cola experience was that it wasn't a Diet Coke experience solely, you know. Um, But I did drink a lot of Diet Coke while I was on site. I would say it's crisper than the average Diet Coke. Really good stuff they have going on there. A lot of innovation. There's lots of new flavors you can try there. What else do you want to know about the Coca-Cola experience? Okay, I'm back. 
thank okay. god this will be rude i think oh I think hell what yeah we have to say about it yeah okay so somebody sent in a hot take Ugh. i can i say i already feel mad and i don't even know what it is i can oh, tell i thought you were gonna I'm, make fun of how i said hot take because i kind of no, did no, no, that no. accidentally that was that was nice of you <laughs> is this gonna make me mad um maybe yeah okay. you might be mad at the people they're describing here okay Hot take on people who share ongoing emotional turmoil through their Instagram stories redundantly. It reminds me of the days when we were all active on Facebook. Yeah. Like high school Facebook. Yeah. And the way that you wrote your status on Facebook was Jessica is or Caroline is. The is was always there. And you would have to like fill in the blank and people would just be like, so stressed right now or yeah. like, <laughs> or something like, cryptic, but like not that cryptic, like boys will just break your heart. Right. Like, okay. or like <laughs> wondering why everyone sucks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Realizing you can't trust any of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But people kind of bring that energy on social media still I fucking yeah i hate it obviously i hate it i mean it makes me like i feel bad in a way if i tap into the side of myself that would have compassion for this person i'm like okay they probably are lonely and don't have anywhere else to put these feelings but i feel like uh, it's just so attention seeking too i don't know it's like i can't trust your motives if you're doing shit like this the most i want to see is put a moody song on your Instagram story, then I'll know that you're in a weird space and like I'll have, but it'll leave something to be desired. Don't just be rambling about your personal life or what are you writing give me long an example. messages. Is there an just, offender you can think of? I've definitely seen it. I can't even think of one. I think I mostly it. unfollow these people. Yeah, I at least would mute the stories. I can't think of an offender. Or even when somebody's like, and you guys know what's been going on with me, I'm like, how can you ever think anyone's ever following what's going on with you? I know. Basically, I assume... like I, I have an entire channel about my life and I assume nobody is paying attention because they're not like people are busy. We're not just thinking about like an Instagram story you posted three weeks ago. Right. I know. I assume no that everyone just clicks through my stories really fast. I just make them because I think they're funny more than anything. Yeah, I assume that, that comes through. That comes through. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that the podcast is just like background noise to someone if they're listening at all. Like I literally assume that no one's, Nobody no one's is. keeping up. Um, so it is a weird, it is a weird thing. And then the thing, and I'm guilty of this, of course. But the thing where people are like, a lot of you have been asking. Like, I know. I was just about to say that. Yeah. A Nobody lot of you asked. have a been lot, wondering how of- I'm doing with the situation with Nobody my baby daddy. Nobody asked. Nobody <laughs> asked. A lot of you guys have asked for this link. Nobody asked for that link. Although sometimes people actually do ask for that link. And then and you then, feel weird about it. And then I'm like, it. I can't I can't say that somebody asked for it because it doesn't sound true. But um, that makes me laugh. Nobody asked yeah. for the link. I usually will be like, two people asked for this link. Because it is usually two people, and I'll just own totally, that, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> we're both having a cough fest right now. I, I mean, fucking allergies. I told you, allergies. Okay, I had a funny thought the other day. <laughs> These are all quick things. This is the problem, but let's just try it. Okay, I could drag it out. <laughs> um. Okay, so I think I was maybe watching. The Bachelor or something like that and I something clicked in my head where I noticed that people will often say not just on The Bachelor like in life too they'll say like yeah we a new couple they'll be like yeah we um we do want to have kids later on but we really want to spend time together before then like traveling and the only thing they ever say is traveling. Yeah. <laughs> like, I understand wanting to have like a chunk of time with your partner before you introduce kids into the picture and all that. I think that's great and whatever. But it's just so funny to me that the thing that literally every couple says is like, you know, we want to travel. And I just want to be like, you've been traveling, hoes? Like, I haven't seen one picture of you traveling. That's so but funny. that's just your little line that like Yeah. That is that everyone says. I think it's so funny. Why why do we need a reason to want to have kids 
you know, later. later. Yeah. Cause we got to travel. And why yeah. is it travel? <laughs> and are, and is anyone actually doing it? I guess some, some of them are, some of them do You know, who's traveling. traveling is people who have little kids. <laughs> They're like, Oh, we got these kids and we still want to travel. I don't know. It's just funny to me it that that's funny. such a trend and something people say. Yeah, a new couple. That is funny. I love that. I love a just thought. I don't have any additions because it was perfect. I told you that it would be a short one. Give me another one. These are one. the things I have. Okay, I probably have another one. Oh, I do have another one. Okay, these are more just thoughts that I wrote down that are decent, but don't spur conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this one might. So <laughs> I was reflecting the other day on like, when I was 24 and I would say things maybe with regard to work or just life in general, I'd be like, I really want a new challenge. Like, I feel like there's, a, I need to make a change. Like I want a new challenge. And I was reflecting on being that type of person and how like, I'll never say something like that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I rem in interviews, you say that type of thing. Like, yeah, the reason I'm looking for new jobs is because I really want a new challenge and it's like kind of bullshit. But I also feel like I'm such a self-improvement and like personal growth obsessed person that I genuinely meant that a lot of the times. And now I think a combination of just being tired and also feeling like I've arrived in a place where I'm really happy with everything that's on my plate. And like, I just want to dig into that. I don't want a new challenge at all. And I don't see myself ever saying that again. And I can't remember the girl that used to say that and mean it. <laughs> but so she funny. existed. You know? You know what? I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna say? What? I'm gonna say she's still here. Fuck. But she's just the the new challenge you seek is not in your day job. I mean, I feel like, you know, you have a podcast project now, and as soon as that stabilizes and feels like this is my prediction i think as soon as the podcast feels like we got it on lock it's taken off we have our system blah 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 i think you're gonna be like caroline i want a new challenge oh my god i predict you'll but be the first in... person i say it to if i which if I that's get how there. i am that's how i am for sure i certainly never never meant it i don't even think i would go <laughs> as far to say that in a job interview i certainly never meant it i literally all the time i was like how, what is like a, how could I rephrase that I'm looking to coast? I'm looking to coast. Yeah. In any day job I ever have, I'm looking to coast. I'm looking to do as little as possible and get, get paid as much as possible. I would like to you make You have a money. position that suits that. Yeah, I would like yeah. to make money. I I guess I like, Um, I am really attracted to this position because I like being able to buy my own food. How about that? Is that yeah. allowed? But, um, but... Definitely need the challenge elsewhere. I think at one point that was YouTube. And then there was a period where I was getting maybe like a year or so ago, year and a half ago, where I was getting like really overwhelmed with like YouTube had like taken off in this way. And it was a big new challenge and there were so many new aspects to it. And I really just craved stability and coasting and a period of calm and a period of just like being in the flow, um, uh, having a routine, nothing new. And then I finally hit that and I enjoyed that for like a week and a half, like maybe nine days. And then I was like, I need a new <laughs> challenge. Yeah. Um, that's definitely, I thought it was going to last me for like months and it was like <laughs> eight days. I guess part of me is like, it's not that I won't take on new challenges. It's just that I don't know if I'm, at least right now, I think you're right. Like, okay, whatever. That girl's still here. But <laughs> um. I feel like I'm not looking to invite those challenges because yeah, they yeah, just yeah. come anywhere anyway. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't need to say I need a new challenge for there to be a new challenge next week. Like, there's going to yeah. be one. Um, and it's one I'm happy <laughs> to tackle, at least if it has to do with the podcast. And so, yeah, I, I guess that's part of it, too. It's just like, yeah, the challenges come whether you want them or not. So enjoy the moments of coasting maybe that's as part funny. of the takeaway. I also think I didn't arrive at a point in my like corporate career where I was comfortable with coasting and yeah. like would gladly tell anyone right now that that's what my goal is in my day yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. Um, now you would. Now I would. 
but that's new as of like the last two yeah. years. You earned was, that. First of all, you like earned yourself into a position where you can kind of say that it's hard to walk in as a new higher entry level yeah. position be like, I'm here to coast. That's true. <laughs> but it was my goal when I walked into this job and yeah. it doesn't mean I don't ever work hard. I've been working late this whole week, but it still doesn't. But also feel... like why is working hard a fucking virtue? I, right. I, 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 com- I think it's like important to commit yourself to certain things. If they're the things you want, I don't think working hard just as like a, f- is like a f- static forever virtue everywhere cutting totally. corners is my fucking virtue yeah no why do i have work to work smarter, hard at harder. everything says fucking who i'm tired i like napping no a hundred percent a hundred percent um oh i had a thought and i lost it what was it oh sorry okay no, so okay. now you walk in and say you want to coast yeah i don't know i was having a conversation a friend of mine from an old job um just reached out to me and was like, hey, I'd love to catch up and just pick your brain about like the year off that you took and kind of what you're doing now and how you pivoted from consulting into this job and whatever. And so I talked to her, I think it was yesterday, and it was such a nice moment of reflection of like how much my vision of what I wanted from my year off really paid off. Like now Mm -hmm. that I'm two years later, um. Like, I really got what I was after, I guess, in terms of having things outside of work that fulfill me, having my work that provides a sense of stability, but I can, like, kind of coast and clock out at the end of the day. Oh, and this is what it was. And then I was also talking to her about the fact that, like, I was so burnt out when I took my year off, like, when I decided to do it. I was burnt out from, like, 10 years of working, but also before that, 15 years of schooling and whatever else. And um, it's interesting because I feel like I'm working more now, like hours in the day spent on work, maybe higher than it almost ever has been because I'm doing my day job. I'm doing the podcast. I'm doing some freelance work. Like I'm actually spending a lot of time each day working. But I don't feel burnt out because it's like stuff that I want to be doing and I have the right level of investment in each thing, like personal Mm -hmm. investment. And I guess I'm just sharing that to say that like there's such a misconception about burnout that it has to do with hard work like you were talking about, like hard work, long hours, people burn out. And I actually don't think it has as much to do with that as it has to do with working on things that just like aren't giving you what you need, Mm -hmm. um, whatever that is. And yeah, I, I'm, I've been in a, in a zone of gratitude recently. Like we hit a year on the podcast and we're making some big moves in the background and, um, I'm doing well at my job and it's kind of like working well for the balance is working pretty decently for me. And, I've been really reflecting on like how far I've come, I guess, and how much this is what I wanted and now I'm here. And yeah, I'm just having one of those times. Yeah. And it's nice. That's beautiful. You've earned it. You've made hard decisions and uncomfortable and risky decisions um, that sacrificed security at times um and certainty at times in order to yeah earn your way to something more fulfilling i think it's really hard and there's a reason most people are really afraid to do it um Mm. if it was easier if it was obviously easier everyone would do it yeah but it takes some leaps i think for me burnout has historically been correlated a lot to um how much i'm wearing a mask Mm. um and that could be like in my day job where in my tech job I liked the people. The work wasn't terrible, um, but it was this place where I felt like I was able to bring none of myself. Um, I didn't feel like there was a place for my humor, my skills, my talents, my interests, like not, not just talking about personality, but also personality and all these other things, like the things I was actually good at. There was just like no room for me there. And to put this mask on so many hours of the day, I every night it's what I dreaded and every morning the first thing in the morning was dread that you know got to that point and I actually I have hit that point before 
with YouTube kind of recently, a couple months ago. Um, I think I talked a bit about how much I was hating being on camera mm -hmm. and I'm like coming out of it a little bit, but I realized that it, I had slowly like gradually found myself in a place again where I didn't feel like I could be myself on camera. Not that being yourself all the time is a right or even doable, but I think you have to have enough of like receiving fulfillment, receiving energy, being able to show up as yourself to some degree. You know, it's a job. We have to work jobs and you don't get to be your whole self there basically. But mm -hmm. it was, um, what I think when the scales tipped too much on YouTube, I felt like at a certain point I got into this um, period of a couple months where I, I felt like there was a certain kind of energy people wanted from me. And if I wasn't feeling that energy and I have to deliver it anyway, then you're acting. Then I'm acting, which is actually a career I quit already and not showing up as yourself. So I think once I realized that the reason I'm like tolerating being on camera again, because I was going to burn out again, I was dreading it. I was dreading mm. filming, dreading hours of performance. Um, I just allowed myself to show up and make videos where I wasn't trying to be funny and I wasn't trying to entertain anyone. I was talking about depressing stuff and like sometimes like crying and whatever, you know, there's a line with being too indulgent and actually just like being honest and that has made it better. Um, but I think it applies to pretty much any job I've had. Like how much are you wearing a mask? Um, Cause it's really, that's like the biggest drain to me, energy drain. Yeah. That's a really good way of putting it. I have noticed and loved it in your videos recently. I think maybe two videos ago, I really liked your choice to talk about kind of a more um, heavy and insightful topic of like making friends when you're an adult and you mm. filmed it while you were running errands, like from the car and walking through DuPont in DC. And um, I loved that because it was like, you were like, I got to get shit done today. Like, come with me. But I'm also going to talk about this big topic. And then your most recent video that I think I just watched yesterday of when you talked about um, kind of like people wanting you to do holiday decor inspo and that not really being your thing and not really feeling true to you right now. So you're like, this is my holiday vibe. Like, I'm on the floor doing some crafts and the fire's crackling and mm -hmm. I got black candlesticks and like, that's as much as I'm going to give you, but it's me. I feel like it resonates so much more like it it's felt on the on the audience's side. So for what that's worth, I and I'm probably biased just because I love you so much. But um, I, I've really enjoyed that. But I think what you're saying about wearing a mask is very well put, like to some degree, that is the thing that's pushed me to burn out in the past two, feeling like I can't not even show up as myself. I, I think I tend to be a person that like shows up pretty consistently as myself in most places, um, just in terms of like how I carry myself and my ability to feel secure in who I am. And I don't know, I, I've that's not really been something that's rattled for me in different jobs. Um, and I've been lucky to have really good coworkers and people I've become friends with too, where I feel like I can be myself here. But it's more like the actual job didn't utilize yeah. my unique capabilities and my unique personality and my unique talents and like you, me. So like yeah. I'm being myself in how I <clears throat> act with other people here. But what we're working on is not like using all this stuff I know I have inside me. Yeah. That was the feeling that I would run into so often. And I was thinking about it. Um, and actually talking to my dad about it recently, just again, like in this moment of gratitude and and reflecting on the podcast and how far I've come. And I was like, I used to like call my dad and sometimes it would be when I was home and I would like go downstairs to the couch where he was watching TV, like mid panic attack about my life's direction and my career fulfillment and I would just be like in tears, shaking, feeling like I'm not doing something that's like, that's me. And it it happened like a couple times a year. And my dad was like a big figure of like one of the main people I would go to during that time. 
during those moments. And I haven't had a moment like that. I've been stressed. I've been tired. I've been spread too thin. I've been anxious. I've been upset. Like, doesn't mean it's all been rainbows and butterflies, but I haven't had like the bottom of like, I'm having a panic attack because I'm not doing something that fulfills me in two years. Yeah. And um, that is like the main thing that drove me to quit my job when I did was like realizing this pattern of this is the wall I keep hitting and it is not sustainable. And everything that I've decided to change as a result of that realization has kind of worked for now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it was definitely this thing of like, I'm not bringing the things totally. I know I have to offer mm -hmm. to my job. My dad was really sweet about it. He was like, I'm really proud of you, not just because I know you've worked hard and, you know, spent a lot of time and energy and all that, but because I know like the heartache and the anxiety that mm. has gone into this. And I was Aww. like, it made me feel very seen that he put it in those words. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I really feel for anybody who's like in that pattern and like wanting to get out of it. I really I almost feel like it's a, a rite of passage. Not that, not yeah. to say like, don't complain, but to say like, don't panic if you're in it, because I think it's you have to you have to like end up in the wrong spots a few times to figure out what you want to adjust to me it feels like being mm -hmm. able to pick your lifelong partner with the first person you pick it's like well it happens sometimes but like probably <laughs> yeah. not probably you're going to end up in a couple spots beforehand where you're like oh this really doesn't work for me so if you are feeling that um i agree with what you're describing as like yeah to me to me it's not emphasis on just how you show up with your personality because i don't think that's a luxury most people get to have in their jobs mm -hmm. even even on youtube being me i don't get to show up with all of me there um let alone in like you know day jobs that m more practical jobs that people have for me it was what you mentioned about like not being able to use your actual skills that that's part of you what yeah. are you interested in what energizes you to some degree what are you good at some where where what can make you feel valuable like to feel like you actually have some value to offer is a big deal and then to me, the mask of having of the fucking act of pretending like I cared about the thing I was working on. Yeah, there are a lot of other jobs I could have that are not content creation, that are not this self indulgent whatever. Like I said, something with like working with children or whatever. There's a bunch of different jobs where you can like care a little bit more than this terrible thing you're in now. To me, sorry, building websites. I was like, I don't give a fuck this doesn't fucking matter to me. That was a personal m mismatch. But um, I think the mask of acting like I gave a fuck. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. what's funny is that, and you said this yourself, um, like a few weeks ago when we were creating our merch site and I have no experience with that. I just kind of went with like the template web design that Shopify gives you. And you were like, I, this is actually exactly the coding work that I used to do front end development, like, can I take a stab at revamping this a little bit and just doing some little tricks to make it a little cuter? I was like, of course. And it was so, well, you did a great job, but then it wasn't even that. It was just that you came back and were like, it's so funny. I used to hate doing this, but doing it for our thing <laughs> was like so much better. Um, Cause now those are skills that you have, like they're a part of you. Maybe that wasn't Maybe it wasn't a part of you before, you know, that you had these coding talents, but you do now at least enough for our purposes. And when it goes to something that's like an extension of yourself, yeah, it makes it feel it's a totally different experience, even though you're doing the same thing. You know, you're yeah, doing, I guess it's you're typing it's what, in the same things. <laughs> what is it going towards? It's why people will it's why when you're spending, you know, working till 2 a.m. on your project, your baby, it's so different than working when I work till 2 a.m. on the fucking NBC online store, like for mm -hmm. someone else's dollar. Um, I, I don't think it has to be about owning your own business, but like, where is the value is the, you can get a lot of value from just like the way you support your coworkers from the way your skills are valued at a company from there. There's a bunch of different ways to do it from the way you're able to provide for your family, like having a job just because 
you know, your motivation is to be able to provide for your family or provide for your community is a huge, huge and valid like motivator way to find fulfillment. Um, and it, it, it can be, it can look different for everybody. There's not a right way, but yeah, jobs. Why do we have to have them? Money's fake. I say it a lot. I'm going to say it again. I mean, it's, it's like not fake because we all need it in this current like realm that we're in, <laughs> but somebody invented it one day and I hate that person. <laughs> <laughs> i hate that person yeah. it's, everything's man-made yo remember when we used to just like give each other goats and stuff oh my i do remember you gave me that great goat that one yeah time. like in the 90s where it would yeah. just be like oh you got i don't have enough corn so you give me a goat and i'd be like oh i owe her two goats from last year and then right. you know then i'd give you extra corn or something like that was i liked that system more i really liked it i really liked it I would like to give a shout out to a publication oh. known as People Magazine. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the lobby of my therapist's office the other day and they, you know, they have a bunch of magazines um, laid out for you to like stare at but not open while you're thinking about everything <laughs> that's going wrong in your life. And there was one, it was a People Magazine that was laying out on the table. <clears throat> And this was the, this was the like feature article on the front. The title, it just said, Jimmy Buffett, his wild, joyful life. And I guess I didn't read it, but it, I guess it was a, just a feature about Jimmy Buffett and how happy he is. And I was like, wait, did he die? No, I, well, I <laughs> oh shit. I don't know. Wait, shit. Google. No, I don't know. Google. I, that's a Jimmy genuine question. Buffett. I, I hope he didn't. Oh, it looks like he died. Recently? Okay, so, so now, yes. Okay. Okay, we love Jimmy Buffett. Okay, so now that article makes much more, a lot more sense, and it kind of <laughs> changes what I was going to say. But I thought they were just putting out an article. Okay, I'm sorry, RIP Jimmy Buffett. But I thought they were just putting out an article. First of all, still a great article. Just being like, I was like, why isn't there more, like, <laughs> news headlines? Like, front page news. Why isn't the New York Times just, like, every other week putting out a front page that's, like, this person's really happy. And like, <laughs> and then like the next week it could be about a tragedy or a crisis or an international issue. And like, but there, there's like, both are happening. Both mm. things are happening. And I'm not saying we need to never hear about the negative stuff, like, but both are happening. And I fucking understand why the fear mongering is always going to take over the headlines but like i think it could be okay if sometimes the fucking washington post was just like we saw a happy guy and this is what he said to us yeah why why aren't there more articles like that i know you're but right it's like fucking just like send things that we like right now that's a, okay i guess i just like, you just want buzzfeed i just want buzzfeed <laughs> Just like one, one fucking main feature about someone who's happy. The problem is that even the Jimmy Buffett article, now that we know it's because yeah, he died, it's colored died. in darkness, you know? Yeah. But it's <laughs> we not. only talk about the joy. Life. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. This is why funerals are so silly. You know, why we wait to say all the good things about somebody once they're dead? They're not even there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's Shit. like weddings and funerals are the two this times you not, get to hear ugh. people toast to you. I no, you should check out that he was dead. You know, should check out BuzzFeed. Me. You should check out. No, no, the no. Onion. I don't like BuzzFeed. I don't like BuzzFeed. I don't like The Onion. I don't want this shit. I don't want jokes. I don't want silly jokes. And I don't want someone selling me products. I just want a full feature investigative piece of journalism about how one person had a good day. That's what mm. I want. Delightful. I've never... Okay. I mean, this is like a really, it's an innovative new idea that I've never heard of. I mean, if it could be done well, that's what like plenty of books and movies and shit are about. Just like a beautiful story. Just tell me a beautiful story. Why does it always have to be an ugly story? Just tell me one beautiful story. That's why I'm such a ones. sucker. I'm such a sucker for those Instagram accounts that are like um, just walking up to a person on the street and being like, are you happy? And sometimes oh. they say no and then it gets emotional but it's kind of like a nice connection moment for humans and a lot of times they say yes because in the grand scheme of things even though things are stressful like yes these people are generally happy and they say a little bit about like how life is good and they're grateful and it's kind of like yeah. oh like the old person said they're happy the old person <laughs> 
I oh. love those types of things. I mean, okay, but I I think People Magazine. To have it in written in a written publication is different because I'm also tired of scrolling. Like you could see that on your Instagram reels feed, and then the next thing is some like miserable thing that returns you right back to square one. You know, like you're scrolling so fast, it's oh. like even if there's a happy thing, it gets lost in the sad things. But yeah. feature articles, that's that's a lost art. I want it to be about something that's not even news. It does change it that he died, you know? I want it yeah. to be about just, like, there has been sustained ongoing goodness in this one corner of the earth. Um, just as ongoing. much as there has been, like, you know, a terrible, terrible crisis on this other corner, and we're going to cover both of them. Because I think mm -hmm. both are important. Like, all the things that we know about every corner of the earth, every tragedy that's happening everywhere, like, their brain was not built to know that. It's not right. built to know that. You can't, like... Yeah, no, we're we're bombarded with information every day. A lot of it being negative. I said I'm trying to know less. And a lot of it is stuff that we shouldn't in a previous life we wouldn't have even known. We wouldn't have even no. had access to the fact that that was happening. No. Yeah. I know. Um it reminds me of too during the pandemic. I don't think he does it anymore. But during the pandemic, um John Krasinski from the office had this started this like web show yeah called it was like some good news or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and, and he then would... he immediately sold it for a bunch of money so did that's he how that that's how that punchline ends yeah wow, of course i know money's fake yeah <laughs> some good news john krasinski why is he kind of annoying to me he's kind of annoying to me oh i think he thinks he's too. really i think he thinks he's real cute I agree. Anybody who says that Jim is their favorite from The Office is the most boring person I've ever met. Like, Jim is not Jim's your favorite. Cute. Jim is cute. He's but, cute, but he's not but your John favorite. Krasinski, but John Krasinski is not Jim. Well, agree with that. Agree with that. But also Jim, yeah, he's cute, true, but true, he's true. not. It's not like, I think I think it's too much hoopla. Creed. It's Creed. It's too it's much Cre hoopla. <laughs> it's Creed. The best person is Creed. The best person is Creed. Wow. And that's why we're in love. Because yeah. that's correct. This has been not for everyone. You've been listening, and that's your fault. You can find us on Instagram and not for everyone pod with the number four. Just because Jay Z to Bakey. I'm on YouTube as Caroline Winkler. Um, we're going to be off next week, and that is sad. But we're going to come mm -hmm. back stronger and more annoying than ever. So that is good. You're right about that. You're absolutely. That's my plan for sure. And I like to, I like to complete my plans. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know how hard it is. For your favorite podcast to go away for a week nikki glazer's podcast is taking a break this week and i feel terribly upset so i do commiserate however we're still going to do it follow us on instagram check out our merch store there will be fun things to keep you busy until merch store we're back yeah okay yeah love y'all kisses <laughs>